All right, I'm doing a little work to the bowl here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the two bushings in there. They actually look a little longer than the bushing I got in the repair kit. And apparently the method for this is taking a bushing driver, which I purchased there, and driving them both out from the back at once. And then you install the new ones from each side. Don't know how it's gonna work driving a bushing with a bushing, but uh, we'll give it a shot. A little bit of slop, but the bushings weren't too bad. Looks like it's working. The, the inner one's coming out. And there you have it, the bushing that was in there. So here's the new bushing and the old bushing side by side. I actually like the uh, size of the new bushing better because the old bushing interfered with the seal. It wouldn't go in there right. And if you remember from the first video, it wasn't even uh, in the bowl. It was just hanging in the shaft doing nothing. So it sh should be able to get the seal in a little farther with this new style bushing. I got this area wiped off. You'll notice two holes in here. What happens is the oil comes through these holes and it can lubricate the shaft on either side of the bushing. So when I press my seal in, I'm not going to want to drive it down until it plugs those holes. I'm just going to go flush with the end of this bowl. Okay, I'm going to drive the new bushing in here. And I'm just going to go until the leading edge of the bushing is flush with this groove on the inside of the cavity. And in case you're wondering, I measured the ID of the old bushing and the new bushing, and they're almost identical. So there's virtually no wear on these old bushings. The inside bushing did have a lot of corrosion on it, though, so that was really the main factor, along with the seal interference, as to why I changed the bushings. So here's the seal I took out of here. You can see it kind of has a snug fit in there. Here's the seal they gave me with the kit, and it's actually a really loose fit. So loose as where it would come out of there. So I went ahead and got a slightly larger seal, and I'm gonna see if I can drive it in just till it's flush so I don't block those oil passages. So here's my slightly oversized seal. I have a thin layer of Permatex on the outside perimeter. And we'll see if we can get that to seat. All right, so I got my uh, oversized 28 by 42 by seven seal on there. Um, ID is the same as the, the seal that was supplied in the kit. Really had some problems getting that seal in there actually to sand down on the outside. It ended up being about 15 thousandths uh, larger than this one by the time it was done. And you can see it's, it's flush with the edge of this bowl. There's about a sixteenth of an inch gap underneath it for that oil to flow. And you can see I installed this seal with the spring facing the impeller as instructed to actually install all three seals um, with the spring facing the impeller. 
this one and the two on the thrust bearing. Okay, here's my shaft. Uh, turns out the new bearing was the exact same ID as the old bearing, so I had to do something and I had it knurled. It wasn't very expensive, only cost 40 bucks. Um, it turns out that the JA pump actually does not have a rear seal on the uh, on that thrust bearing. So it's basically just this. So I'm going to go ahead and press this on with some Loctite 680. All right, I'm gonna clean up this, uh, these pieces with a little brake cleaner. Get all the oils off of them. And also clean the shaft. I'm going to apply the Loctite 680 to both pieces. Loctite 680 retaining compound. This is basically made for this exact application, a loose type bearing. And you apply it to both sides, you press it on, and you're supposed to let it dry overnight. shaft seal sleeve um, pressed on and actually the knurling stayed out pretty good there where the sparing is going to be a press fit as well so I lucked out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this up, apply Loctite 680 to both of these and get the sparing pressed on. Alright, I got my bearing pressed on. It was a really good press. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe off all the excess Loctite now. You don't want any of that getting in your bearing. And I'm going to cure overnight. You can see it's actually right at the snapping groove, so it pressed on to the perfect distance. There were some other really good suggestions on fixes for this. Uh, one thought I had was adding weld and turning it down, but the problem with that is you risk warping the shaft. Another for the seal sleeve was drilling and tapping it and putting a set screw in it. I like that thought, but that wouldn't work for the bearing. And another suggestion was having it hard chromed, but that sounded really expensive. And I'm actually pretty pleased with the way this went together, so I think we'll be alright. Working on the bowl, I went around all the mounting holes with a blind hole tap. Really got a lot of crud out of there. Looking at the bowl veins itself, um, they're really pretty beat up. So I'm going to clean them up a little bit with a non-ferrous burr. I read somewhere that you can actually uh, knife edge these. You want them like a chisel, flat on one side and um, wedged on the other. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going for longevity. I'm going to go for more of a blunt edge and I'm going to try to match them up by eye. And I'm going to take off as little material as possible. After I used the non-ferrous grinding burr, I went ahead and used a flat file to even up the edges. And then I used a sandpaper roll. And this is what I ended up with. You can see that uh, some of them had huge nicks I couldn't completely get rid of. I didn't want to take that much material off. Another note on this, uh, you can see that I had the uh, oil seal and the bushings taped up. You don't want to be getting shavings in there. And I also had the oil cap on the back. One other thing I did to this bowl is where you add the oil, I uh, got rid of the original plug and I got a stainless plug drilled it and tapped the center of it so I have a screw. That way you're not constantly going in and out of those aluminum threads. Aluminum threads don't really last that long, so now I have a steel to steel contact there. See, so I drilled it out, 
I just have a tapered screw and an O-ring in there. Works pretty good.